Hello everyone, I'm Alexis Siraklis and today we'll be talking about transcription in prokaryote. Before we get started, here are some terms that you need to know. The rest of the terms will be discussed throughout the video. To start us off, here are the stages of transcription in prokaryotes. In order, we have template binding, chain initiation, chain elongation, and chain termination. We will be discussing each stage in further detail. Here we have an example of how DNA looks in its coiled state before initiation occurs and unwinds it. Keep this in mind as we continue. This diagram is of the transcription unit of DNA and its parts. Below are two parts of one DNA strand, pink and blue, that move in inverse directions to each other. We can see this by the pink strand being labeled in the 5 to 3 prime direction and the blue strand vice versa. What we need to know is RNA is read 3 to 5 prime while the direction of transcription is 5 to 3 prime. This tells us that the blue strand is our template strand that nucleotides of RNA are built off of and the pink strand is our coding strand that has a base sequence that codes for our RNA being made, except it has the base thymine while RNA has uracil. Next, we have the promoter region with a negative 35 site, a negative 10 or ta ta box site, and a plus 1 site. The negative 35 and negative 10 site are consensus sequences that serve an important function for initiation of transcription. The plus 1 marks the place of the transcription start site. It also is part of the RNA coding region where nucleotides for RNA are transcribed before transcription termination by a terminator. Now let's look at transcription initiation based off what we just learned and add in our workers the core RNA polymerase and sigma factor. Initiation begins when the core RNA polymerase and sigma factor bind together in the promoter region at the negative 35 and negative 10 consensus sites to create one unit, the hollow enzyme. This hollow enzyme goes on to separate the DNA strands and form a transcription bubble. After initiation, the sigma factor disassociates after a few nucleotides are added. RNA polymerase stays and works with RNTPs to begin the process of elongation. What we see here is the unwound RNA coding region where elongation occurs. As mentioned before, RNA polymerase stays to synthesize RNA by following a strand of DNA in the direction of transcription. New nucleotides are added to the 3' end of the RNA molecule. Lastly, we have the process of row-independent termination. As the RNA molecule continues to grow, it will eventually form a hairpin loop made from inverted repeats. This signals RNA polymerase to terminate transcription. The poly-AU tail made of adenine and uracil bonds is what separates DNA from RNA. Now we've come to the end of the transcription termination process and can see the dissociation of DNA from RNA as the RNA hairpin molecule is released. Now let's look at a hypothetical situation. What would happen if during transcription there is a 5 base pair insertion between the negative 35 region and the negative 10 box of a gene that codes for an enzyme required for the production of the chosen amino acid? Based on what was given to us about the 5 base pair insertion, we know it falls into the promoter region of the DNA between the two consensus sequences, negative 35 and negative 10. This is not what we want. Having a mutation in the promoter region will throw off the consensus sequences, causing RNA polymerase and sigma factor to not bind or bind incorrectly. This will decrease or prevent transcription of RNA. Also, it will not be able to produce the wanted amino acid because it wasn't placed in the RNA coding region. Thank you for watching.